Hey, 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 and welcome back to the Fully Booked Photographer Podcast. And this week, I'm on my own. And there's good reason for being on my own this week, because we decided to get into our Fully Booked Photographer time machine. I got back a little bit in time to the day when we did the amazing webinar with Mike Michalowicz, which was implementing for photographers the Get Different Marketing fundamentals and frameworks within Mike's book. And Mike Michalowicz, I have loved Mike Michalowicz from the first time I met him and from the first time I became a Profit First Professional in 2019. Mike is one of those absolute geniuses in the business world. So I hope you enjoy this podcast. This is a recording that's broken into two parts. So this week is part one and next week will be part two. All right. Hello, everybody. Come on in and say hello. We're deeply honored to have the wonderful Mike Michalowicz with us tonight um, or today or this afternoon or this morning. We have people from Hawaii, we have people from all over the world joining us. So tell us who you are in the chat. Tell us where you're joining us from. Go and say hello to everybody. Don't be shy. Come on, guys. They're all, they're all still coming in. So come on, guys. Say hello to us. Say where you're from. Put in the chat your name. Put in the chat where you're. Oh, Canada. Look, and we've got from Philadelphia. And oh, I gotta Utah. make sure they say to everybody because um, Oh yes, yes. Make sure you turn to 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 host and panelists, guys, in the chat. It might it might default to just to just panelists. So make sure you have hosts and panelists as you do. Look at all these people. Scotland, Mike, all the way from Scotland. Scotland's here. Ohio. Actually, one of my Scotland's colleagues is here. heading over to Scotland uh, next month. Uh, beautiful place. It's it's the second most beautiful place after Ireland. Next to right? Ireland, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, Kansas City are here. Come on, Kansas, and we have. Uh, Oh, South Africa. Look at that. We've got, got Vicky all the way from South Africa. New Jersey's in the house. There we go. More than once, more than once. <laughs> and we've got England. And we've got Hawaii. There's Jennifer from Hawaii. Jennifer, Cape great Cod. to see you. And Washington and Cape Cod and Austin, Texas and London and another Scotland and Mars. Hello. Hello. We've given somebody from Mars. Look how famous you are, Mike. There's people join us from Mars. From Mars. You know, and, and Musk and Musk hasn't even this, hasn't figured out how to get us there yet, and yet they're joining us from there. How cool is that? <laughs> come, on, <laughs> come on in, everybody. Look at look at that that Hawaii crew. Look, they're all together. They're having a, a vacation and a working vacation. Vacation. They're BSA members, Mike, and they're they're all getting together for a great session of idea mining in Hawaii I together. Love it. How cool is I that? Love it. All right, guys. So come on in. Keep on coming. There's Bonnie all the way from Kansas again. And we've Florida, sunny Florida like Janine. It's her sort of. Oh, yeah. wow. And Ireland, Paul, welcome all the way from Cavan in, 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 um, in Ireland. So Cavan's known, let me tell you while we're, everyone's coming in there, Mike. So Cavan's known as the people who are really careful with their money, you know. Um, so, so, so like if you can get a cabin man or woman to part with money, you're doing really, really well. <laughs> Not right, Paul? It's a miracle. <laughs> Australia's joined in. That must be very early, Steve. It, it must be. It must be about 3 a.m. in, in, in or thereabouts. All righty. Okay. And Lorraine is here. I think we can get started, guys. What do you think? Let's do it. Well, we would do it. Okay. So, guys, let me just outline what we're going to do today. So, Mike is going to outline for us all his amazing idea mining process that he has in his book. And we'll share a link with you for those of you who haven't bought the book. It'll go in an email after the session. Well, Mike's going to go through the whole process. And obviously, because we're on a webinar, you know, we won't have time to turn off our cameras for 30 minutes and go through the whole process of coming up with the ideas. But the BSA team earlier today, we've gone through the whole process and we've come up with a couple of these that we can share. So we've done one for all seven genres of photography with four unique ideas for each. And then Mike We'll probably critique some of those or pick one or two to deep dive into. Mike, over to you. Ronan and crew, thank you so much for having me. It's good to see you. Thanks for attending, my friends. And uh, I have a funny story. I just interviewed this guy a couple of days ago uh, around a objective he had. He wanted to get a group of people together and start exercising regularly. In fact, it was just going for walks. And uh, that requires marketing. If you want to get any community taking action, you got to market regardless if you're truly selling something or not. And I'll tell you, the hardest group to market to are volunteers, people that volunteer their time. So yeah, I'll do this with you. Well, I got together some people uh, that said they'll do it. And then the day arrives and there's no shows and uh, people weren't committed to it. So he started to idea mine. And that's what we're going to explore today. He started to do this and you can even do it 
by yourself. I'll show you a technique later on, um, a, a way to do this. He started to idea mine. He says, well, I want to walk. I can't remember how many miles it was. I, so don't quote me on this, but I want to say it was 10,000 miles. Or maybe it was 1,000. Maybe it was 1,000 miles over uh, a year's time frame. Maybe it was more than that. But let's say it's 1,000 miles. He then went on the Google, uh, and it's called the Google. He went on the Google, and he started searching and said, um, what's the equivalent to, say, 1,000 miles? Again, it may have not been 1,000 exactly. Well, it was a distance from here to the outer edge of the atmosphere to the start of space. So he changed the name from the Walkers Club to the Space Walkers and said, who wants to be a space walker? And he rallied everyone to participate. They, they got little uh, helmets designed as stickers and they are sticking it on their, um, their walking you know, com- computers or, or not computers, their uh, walking machines, whatever they're called. Um, and and uh, they're tracking this. And everyone's all in. I was like, wow, that's that the definition of effective marketing. Nothing's changed except he approached it in a different way. That's what we're going to explore. Now, I have a question for you. Pedometers. Thank you, Anne Marie. The pedometers. Um, here's a question for you. All, everyone participating on this call, in the chat, tell me if this is true. You can simply say yes or no. Are you better than your competitors? Now, let me add a little caveat here, a little asterisk. I'm not saying in every capacity, but in at least some capacities, do you care more? Do you respond quicker? Do you service better? Just put a yes, hell yes, whatever you want. Definitely. Look at, oh my gosh, I don't know if you can see the chat. I hope you haven't changed it to everyone because it's pouring through my machine. Yes, yup. Yes, hell yes. Uh, yes. Um, everyone except Lee. So there's a little dig to another member, there, another participant here. I hope so. Yes, yes, yes. F yes. Good job, Bobby Bush. Yes. And here's the deal. I guarantee you're better than the competition in some capacity. And, and here's why I guarantee it. You're here on this call. You were here to learn and expand yourself. Do you know your competition's unlikely that they're here? They're, they're just in the daily grind. It's business owners and business leaders that are looking to learn and expand. They're better than the competition. Well, if you are better than the competition, I want to remind you, you have a responsibility to market accordingly. You must be discovered. Now, imagine this. There's a client looking to get photography work done. That's the work you do. Here's your competitor, and here's you. But you are, and you just shared with me, a better provider. You're superior in some capacity. If that prospect hires you, they win. And if they hire the competition, they don't win as much. But if you're invisible and not discoverable, that client, they need to buy that service. They want that service. They can't see you. They're going to hire the competition, which is providing less value. That is the client's problem, but your fault. And it's my fault. It's our fault because we must make you discoverable. Write this one down. You have a responsibility. Or you start with the words I. I have a responsibility to be discovered. I have a responsibility to be noticed. Because if you are better than the competition, it is your responsibility. In fact, write this one down. Marketing your business is the ultimate act of kindness. So the question is, how do you market? Well, I want to share the quick framework, and then we're going to show uh, a strategy on how to develop ideas. But this is my little overhead projector. And um, we're going to use a model called DAT. And uh, I've heard every dad joke since uh, creating this model, so I don't need any more. But if you do feel compelled to put it in the chat, good on you. Here is the dad model. There's three elements that act as a checklist in your marketing that will enhance your ability to successfully be discovered. And if you miss even one element, your marketing is crippled. The first is we must differentiate from the standard noise. The second is it must be attractive. It must attract the right prospect. And finally, it must tell that prospect what to do through giving them a direction. So differentiate to get noticed, attract to get engagement, direct to get comp- uh, to compel people to take the action that is of service to them. Being noticed isn't enough alone. If you're better than a competition and a prospect's looking to hire a photographer and you can serve them greatly, you first have to get noticed. Then you have to compel them or engage them to to investigate why they should work with you. And then you need to tell them what to do now that you've garnered their attention. Those three elements are necessary. But it starts with different. I don't care how great your service is. I don't care 
how wonderful uh, your offer is. None of that matters if you aren't noticed in the first place. So what we're going to do in our session today is we're going to talk a little bit about the different part or a lot about the different part in getting noticed in the first place. Then we're also going to make sure it pass the other checks, the other elements, because being different for different sake is not appropriate. In fact, there's a reason I put the sign up for you here. It says, be you always. So ever since I've been talking about um, this process of get different, I was very blessed to be the keynote at uh, the PPA event, Imaging USA, that what I hear as feedback is I need to be noticed, but getting different, being different means I need to be outrageous. And that's just not who I am. I'm not a weirdo. I'm not you know, goofy. I'm not outrageous. And that is a misunderstanding of this whole concept. In fact, the idea of getting different is not about you being different. It's actually about you being more of yourself. It's an amplification of who you are, which inherently gets different, is different from the competition. So don't change who you are. Amplify who you are through your marketing. And the reason that's important is people expect what they experience with you in your marketing to be the experience they have with you when they work with you. In fact, the only experience they have with you uh, prior to working with you is your marketing. And if there's an incongruency, it's awkward. Happened to me recently. I was on a Zoom call just like we're doing now. And um, as I was on the Zoom call, uh, these people were joining in early and their cameras were off where you know, it means your picture pops up. And I remember I jumped on, I looked at this one picture of one of the participants, it was a woman. And, Gosh, she's really young. And I'm just surprised, just based upon the context of the meeting we're having, that someone so young will be on this call. Well, then we activate her cameras. And I was looking at her picture, and all of a sudden, she activates it. And I go, whoa, my God, you just aged 30 years in a blink of an eye. And I'm like, oh, that was your favorite picture from when you were prepubescent, you know, from 30 years ago. <laughs> now, listen, I get it. We all have our favorite pictures of ourselves, but in marketing, to show something that's not representative of the true you, and then the experience is different, causes a disconnect. I see Shay's already experienced that too with other people, right? We have to represent who we are currently. And I wish she did too, because for a second, there's a mistrust. It's like, that is not what I expected. There's mistrust. So when it comes to getting different, when it comes to marketing your business, we're going to do it in a way that's absolutely consistent with who you are. It's just an amplification of who you are. Now, we're going to use a strategy to get there called idea mining. The idea behind this is it's very similar to brainstorming, um, but one reason I don't like to use the word brainstorming is because we go into a default parameter. Like For example, if I told you I'm a lawyer, I don't need to tell you much more about what I do because you have a default parameter, default definition of what a lawyer is. So if I say, oh, we're going to brainstorm, like, oh, I know how to do this. So we just throw a lot of ideas out there. We're going to do something a little bit different. Idea mining is a way to extrapolate as much ideas as possible, um, an infinite supply, hopefully, and then cherry pick the diamonds from it. It's like when you go in coal mining or diamond mining, you don't just pull out diamonds, you pull out everything and then you sort through it to find the best stuff. Now, the idea mining strategy works like this. You can do it individually solo. So let me show you the technique on this piece of paper uh, here. If you decide to do the idea mining by yourself and, uh, or you can do it with a, with a group of people also on a piece of paper. Basically, you create a column or sheet that has three columns and you write down above the column or sheet who you are targeting, what you are offering them, and the win or the outcome you want to achieve. So that we call it who, what, and when. Who's the ideal avatar? What is the product or service we're trying to sell? That's what marketing often does. And what's the win for you? What's the definition of the success in this transaction? Now, one thing is you don't want to ask too much. If, if I had a car lot and you're looking to buy your dream car and you walk in and my, my target is the who is someone looking to buy their dream car. Um, the what is that I'm looking to sell a dream car and the win is the actual final transaction. That's the goal I'm getting to. I may not be able to leap right to it. You, you walk in and say, hey, I'm looking for my dream car. It'd be absurd for me to say, well, give me a $100,000 deposit and we'll put that car in your, in your driveway right now. No, there has to be a process of, of building trust and rapport. So maybe the appropriate transaction is give me your cell number and I will uh, start sending you photographs of cars that you can select from. Now I have permission to market to you and I'm providing information of value and we can matriculate or move toward that final transaction. 
So the win is the ultimate outcome and sometimes the steps to get there. Once you have the who, what, and when, we're just going to write down ideas about. So I'm looking to sell cars. Um, I'm going to write down um, ways I could sell cars. So I could have uh, or market that way. I could have balloons out front. Um, I could have um, a, um, a waving uh, Mickey Mouse or whatever, you know, someone out front. Um, I could have a big American flag. I mean, car lots around here use that. Then what you do in this idea of mine is once you have the initial ideas you write down, now you look at the first one and say, how can you rotate this? How can you change it? So I put balloons. Um, I could have uh, that balloon, I call it balloon boy, that guy that kind of flops around and does something. Um, and then waving Mickey Mouse. Uh, maybe I could have um, just big Mickey ears uh, on top of the cars, right? And what we do is we just keep on generating ideas by looking at the prior idea and putting a new rotation on it. Well, I have the word boy here. Maybe I could have uh, the Boy Scouts uh, come and uh, do a troop of a fair there, and they're coming with their parents and stuff. And maybe I could teach children about vehicle safety or something like that. And it just keeps on going on and on. So the idea of an idea of mine is this, to generate ideas as rapidly as we can without putting any significance on any individual ideas. Idea mining is collecting all that dirt, and then we're going to sort out the diamonds from it. It's the collection process. Now, here's a problem with traditional brainstorming. Traditional brainstorming is fraught with bias and um, um, implicit direction. So in traditional brainstorming, I'll say, hey, I'm, I'm looking to move more cars in my car lot. What should I do? And you may come back and say, oh, you should set up a, one of those balloon things that flap around. I'm like, ah, oh, that's been done before. That's probably not going to work. And the person looking to create ideas is actually squelching ideas. The idea is generate as many as possible so we can extract it. Now, here's how we do it in a format like we're experiencing right now. So we're on a Zoom meeting. The person asking for the ideas actually turns off, I'll do it real quickly, turns off their camera. So you can't see me now by just doing that. I can, oops, Ronan, that was a mistake because now I am not the host anymore. So uh, I have no ability to turn my camera back on. Magically, I've permanently disappeared. So you're going to have to make me a host again, temporarily. Um, so then, oops, tell me when it's back. That's, that proves this is live, by the way. <laughs> okay. Oh, there, I'm back. Okay, thank you. So, so what happens in the idea mining process is the person seeking the ideas will actually squelch ideas because we put our bias into it. What we do on a virtual session like this is you turn off your camera and you turn off your microphone. You first stage the who, what, and when. You say, here's who I'm targeting. Here's what I'm selling. Here's the outcome I want to achieve. And then you turn off and you let the people around you to, to volunteer ideas. And since you can't participate, you can't speak, you can't be seen, you become a recorder. You just write things down. And it's like being a fly on the wall. If you do this in person, and that's how actually we do the majority of our brainstorming, um, we will meet in a conference room, all masked up, but whoever's asking the question that's brainstormed around, usually it's me, goes and faces the corner, like, like grade school days, and I face the corner a lot. And uh, I'm not allowed to have any eye contact with anyone, and all I'm allowed to do is write. And if I speak up, they actually throw pens at me to quiet me down. We run a session, 15 to 20 minutes, and the ideas are voluminous. And then we extract the best ideas. How do you extract the best ideas? You look through the list and you start doing experiments. And uh, one mistake many businesses do is they simply take the first idea they see and they say, oh, that's part of our plan. Now that's what we're going to do. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to deploy experiments. I'll explain what that is when we wrap things up. But I thought what would be fun is uh, Ronan and the team here have already done this brainstorming just so that we, we don't spend too much time de uh, deliberate, uh, deliberating over this and we can kind of demonstrate some of the outcomes already. So, so Ron, that's the basic outline of how this works. Do you want to take it from here and tell me what you got? Sure. So, so, um, so Mike, what we did today was we, the BSA team brainstormed because we've got so many clients in the audience, Mike. We've got everybody who, from wedding photographers to portrait to team photographers to newborn to you name it. So we've taken seven genres. We've imagined each of them as a client. And yeah. we brainstorm some ideas. And so we all have one idea to give you. 
Um, I love it. So we're going to so we're going to start with wedding photographers, right? And what we're trying to do here is to connect with um, brides who are engaged because the woman who makes the decision, right, to book us for the wedding. But we want to use um, different ideas to get their attention, right, and bring them into our world. So we're so, looking. So within this marketing, we're looking to have the bride. That's the who we want to sell our wedding photography services. That's the what. And the win, what's the first win just for them to sign up for an appointment or meet with us? Is that the first yeah, stage? So, so we've a couple of different ideas here. So um, we're going to, in, in in Brad's example, when he gets into it, you'll see that he's using a sprat to catch the salmon. It's the same we have in Ireland, you know, we put a sprat on the end of the hook, put it into the river and the sprat catches the salmon. So yep. he, 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 when Brad's idea, when he deep dives into that, it's going to explain some of that. So. And, and I, I know, Mike, you like us to do this in rapid. So what I'm going to do is the guys know the, the sequence they're going in. So once Brad finishes, um, straight away, Jonathan will start and Janine will go and then I'll go. And then that'll be the four ideas for wedding. And then if you want to deep dive at that stage into that yeah. before we move yeah. on to maternity, newborn or whatever. And this is kind of on the fly here, but I also invite in the chat, after you hear these ideas, let's all try to expand. I want the everyone listening in right now, when you're listening, listen for one, one idea you like the best and then give it a fresh spin. And I'll give you some strategies around spinning it, but then post that in the chat after we're done with this first round. How's that sound? Excellent. Okay. Okay. Megan's in. At least Megan's in. She's like, bring it. She goes, bring All it. All righty. Bradley, go. All right. Cool. So I'm not a wedding photographer, but I am getting married next year. So oh, I'm good. inundated uh, with wedding ads on Facebook, and they're all absolutely terrible. So I I was thinking how I'm going to advertise on Facebook to attract wedding clients. So the thing we do in BSA is a register to win advert. So that's a funnel geared around giving away an experience or a portrait session uh, for free in order to get a lead and contact detail. So then we can qualify at at a later date and then get them into the studio. So instead of going for the main wedding and giving that away for free, because you can't do that, What you can do is do that, uh, front load that with a forever session, couples party experience, however you want to word that. Run the register to win for that. Get the lead on the front end uh, for that client. Phone them, qualify them, book them in for that forever, for the forever session, party experience. Mm -hmm. Sell to them then, get to know them. And then if they are your ideal wedding client and then book them in at a later date. And the real critical thing there is, you're going to be asking questions on funnel uh, to find out if they're going to be a client. So, so your first question is, do you already have your wedding photographer booked? Because if they put yes, you're not going to phone them. So, so they're going to pre-qualify themselves out because you want to book weddings at the end of the day. But if they, if they say no uh, and then answer, you know, a compelling question about, you know, why this, you know, why your husband-to-be is the, the man you want to spend the rest of your life with. If they fill that out in line with your ideal avatar, that's when you can give them a ring and then move that, you know, take that client down that process and book them in for a wedding. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Thank you. Jonathan. Okay. So I'm going to combine a little bit of physical here with digital. So you've already spoken a little bit about the quantum card. So imagine if you could partner with a jeweler, local jeweler, and the bride to be is going in with her partner to buy their engagement ring. Mm-hmm. What you could do is partner with the jeweler and take out your quantum card, have a jewel branded to your business and the jeweler's business. And when someone buys an engagement ring from the jeweler, um, they can redeem an engagement session, a gift certificate with mm-hmm. the purchase of the um, engagement ring. So basically you have your quantum card, they tap it to their phone, it opens up a landing page jewel branded to the jeweler and the photographer where the bride to be can then, you know, basically redeem their engagement session. Got that it. The jeweler is gifting with the purchase. Got it. Got it. Cool. Okay. What else we got? All Thanks. right. So the idea I had was I don't photograph weddings either, but I photograph babies. So I'm a big fan of partnerships. So a newborn photographer and a wedding photographer could partner up with mm. two certificates, right? So as a baby photographer, I could partner with a wedding photographer that they could give a gift certificate for a newborn session to their couple's first baby, right? And then on the flip side, not everybody gets married and then has a baby. Sometimes people have the baby and then get married. So I could offer certificates to my clients who are not married yet, if they're getting married or they talk about the wedding, 
to um, have some sort of offering for the wedding photographer in return. So it's a two-way gift certificate offering and we're sending clients back and forth to each other. Mm, I like that. I like that. Ronan, you got one for me too? Yeah. So at every wedding, how many wed- other weddings in the future are there? And where's the opportunity to turn the wedding clients into a family portrait session? So a lot of wedding photographers have second shooters, you know, who do, who do behind the scenes and stuff. Why not turn them into a family portrait photographer for the day? And many people will say, well, you know, we can't get these people to come for an in-person sales session to a studio. You don't need any more because you've got Zoom. You now have virtual in-person sales. Mm-hmm. So now that that barrier is gone and photographers throughout the pandemic have found that their average sales value is not it is not being hurt by doing a proper reveal on Zoom. Mm, love it. So I'll show you what I'm doing. So I want everyone to join in and, and give your ideas in just a second. So yes, I do love writing on pads. I'm writing the initial ideas and I'm already starting to expand on these ideas. You see, the idea of these sessions, and th- this is the final output, is just rapid fire dump ideas. So this is just me riffing. I heard put a ring on it. I'm like, oh my God, what if we sent out like just the, the in magic shops, they have these fake fingers. I use them for magic tricks. What if you said that? Like a finger, like how bizarre is that? I'm like, that's kind of gross. What if you took one of these quantum cards and made it into a ring shape and it says, you know, put this ring on it or something. Then, Ronan, when you're talking, I said, oh, what if we took the family that we want to get together? We took all just their headshots and we did one of those like, kind of elf videos. Like when Christmas comes, you can paste on the different heads and they start dancing around. What if you kind of assembled this picture and said, um, without a professional photographer, this is kind of how the picture will look, and, and you can do something like that. So um, there's an idea. Love the idea of gift certificates. I'm playing around with different gifts um, with that. I want to ask our chat session, what are some ideas you have that were triggered by this? Now, I'll give you some techniques. I didn't give it to me yet, so you're going to use them for next go-around, but if you have an idea, post it in the chat. What I want, oh, and someone doesn't know what a quantum card is. Are you kidding me? Watch this. Jeez. You pull out your card, um, you tap it to your phone. There's my phone. I don't know if you can see it. I tap it, and I got to tap it right there. And it pulls up the site of my choice um, instantly. So it's just a real cool way. And maybe, uh, Ronan, you're going to talk about it more later, but these things are cool. So um, one technique, one technique is to ask what's the opposite. So I heard like gift certificates, what would be a gifting certificate? Maybe instead of receiving, what would be something I could use to give to people? Um, so thinking of what you hear and then hearing or considering the reverse of it, if, if everyone sends out uh, you know, letters that are black text on a white letter, why don't you use a black letter with white text? That's different. So I'm just trying to reverse it. Another technique, um, I told you about that guy who did the spacewalker idea. What he did is he looks at small elements within the piece. We were talking about snowmen of all people because it's that time of year up here. And he says, you know, they used to put coal on their nose to eyes. He said, let's talk about coal. He said, what what if the snowman becomes kind of the anti-coal movement and is against the consumption of coal and moving to, you know, other fuels like solar energy and so forth. The snowman may be the perfect person. So one idea is you, you take an existing idea and you you kind of go down to the individual elements. So those are a couple ideas. Write them down. I see a Dua session, session, a um, sp- sports photographer teaming up. There's some stuff coming in the chat. Check these ideas out. All right. I know we got to move quickly. What else we got? What's All the next right. category? So we're now talking to newborn and maternity photographers, right? <laughs> so Brad, off yeah. with you. All right, cool. So most newborn clients that we get in the studio are millennials. And TikTok's kind of, sweeping millennials away uh, at the moment as it is everybody and mm-hmm. so i wanted to come up with an idea of how to use tiktok and how to use clients um to film something that's native that's organic on the tiktok platform um, Love it. so the idea i've got is to get clients to do unboxings so you know film a, a how-to video to give to your clients mm. so that they know the process to do you know they'll do the unboxing themselves so they'll start it on the front porch or outside the door with the box being delivered of the products They'll take it inside. Uh, they'll film them opening the box. In my head, it's like a portrait box, reveal box, like an album. So they can open the album, see see the product, talk about the photographs, talk about what it means to them. And then at the end, give a slight direct, so like a call to action about going to them, a landing page the, the photographer has already prepared. Love it. And then, you know, to try and get as many clients as you can 
to film these videos, to post it out onto TikTok, Instagram, reuse it as content just to try and go a bit viral, really. Well, I want to show everyone uh, here. He, he talked about TikTok unboxing. I already have the ideas. I'll tell you about it in a second. Baby burps, baby bloopers. That's awesome. Um, thank you. And just a reminder, everyone, do change your setting in the chat from hosts and panelists to everyone so we can all see your feedback too. Okay, who's up? So I hope you really enjoyed that first part of the podcast of the webinar we did with Mike Michalowicz on Get Different Marketing. Buy the book if you haven't yet bought it. Great tips and tricks in there. And next week, we'll play for you part two of the webinar that the Fully Book Photographer team recorded with Mike Michalowicz. For now, we'll see you soon. Bye for now.